Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to discover how to investigate the rate of hydrolysis of haloalkanes. You should then be able to discover how the rate of hydrolysis of a haloalkane is affected by the halogen present. In the last video, we looked at the hydrolysis of haloalkanes using aqueous hydroxide ions. And if you haven't seen that video, then you should watch it now. We saw that hydrolysis takes place via nucleophilic substitution with the hydroxide ion acting as a nucleophile. Remember that a nucleophile has a lone pair of electrons and is attracted to an electron deficient carbon atom, such as the one in haloalkanes. The nucleophile donates its lone pair of electrons to form a covalent bond to the carbon atom. Because a carbon atom can have a maximum of four bonds, the covalent bond between the carbon atom and the halogen atom breaks. This is heterolytic fission, with both electrons and the covalent bond moving on to the halogen. At the end of hydrolysis, we've made an alcohol molecule, and we've released a halide ion, which scientists call a leaving group. Now in this video, we're looking at how to investigate the rate of hydrolysis of haloalkanes. We're going to see how the rate of hydrolysis depends on the halogen atom in the haloalkane. We're going to compare the rate of hydrolysis of one chloropentane, one bromopentane, and one iodopentane. As you can see, these are all primary haloalkanes. To measure the rate of hydrolysis, we monitor the formation of the halide ion using aqueous silver nitrate. First, we take three test tubes, and into each test tube we place one centimeter cubed of ethanol. As we saw in the last video, haloalkanes are insoluble in water, so the ethanol acts as a solvent, allowing the haloalkanes to mix with aqueous solutions. Next, we add 0.1 cm3 of haloalkane to each test tube. We now place each test tube into a water bath at 60 degrees Celsius. At cooler temperatures, hydrolysis is very slow. In a separate test tube, we add aqueous silver nitrate and place this test tube into the same water bath. We now wait for 10 minutes for all of the solutions to reach the same temperature. Now we add 1 cm3 of the aqueous silver nitrate to each test tube and start timing. Remember that in aqueous solutions, the solvent is water, and water is a nucleophile. So the water molecule reacts with the haloalkanes by nucleophilic substitution, and hydrolysis takes place. During hydrolysis, the halide ion will be released from the haloalkanes. The halide ion will then react with the silver ions to form an insoluble precipitate of silver halide. The chloride ion will form a white precipitate of silver chloride. The bromide ion will form a cream precipitate of silver bromide. And the iodide ion will form a yellow precipitate of silver iodide. In each case, we time how long it takes for a precipitate to form. Now you'll notice that we're using water to carry out hydrolysis, rather than hydroxide ions, which we saw in the last video. That's because hydroxide ions react with silver ions to form insoluble silver hydroxide. So we cannot use hydroxide ions for this experiment. OK, I'm showing you the results of the experiment here. One iodopentane forms a yellow precipitate very rapidly. Next, one bromopentane forms a cream precipitate. This reaction is slower than one iodopentane. Finally, one chloropentane forms a white precipitate. One chloropentane reacts much more slowly than either one iodopentane or one bromopentane. OK, so as we've seen, iodoalkanes undergo hydrolysis most rapidly, followed by bromoalkanes, and then followed by chloroalkanes. Now we can explain this by looking at the bond enthalpies involved. Remember that during hydrolysis, we have to break the carbon to halogen bond. The carbon to chlorine bond has a relatively high bond enthalpy. This means that it takes a lot of energy to break the carbon to chlorine bond. Because of this, the hydrolysis of chloroalkanes is a very slow reaction. The carbon to iodine bond has a relatively low bond enthalpy and does not take a lot of energy to break, and that explains why iodoalkanes react rapidly. The carbon to bromine bond enthalpy lies between the other two, which is why bromoalkanes react more rapidly than chloroalkanes but less rapidly than iodoalkanes. OK, so hopefully now you can describe how the rate of hydrolysis of a haloalkane is affected by the halogen present. Mm -hmm. 